I want to get the Republican response to the number today. Senator Bob Corker from Tennessee joins us this morning. Senator, good morning to you. As always, good to see you. Good. Always good to see you. Thank you. Uh, you heard Steve talking about not just today's number, but ADP, confidence numbers, some of these ISM numbers we've gotten over the past few weeks. Uh, are you ready to say that uh, it appears like economic acceleration is here? Look, it's a great way to start the year. I know there's nothing that Tennesseans care more about secularly anyway than, than heads of households having good paying jobs. So I'm excited to see these numbers. The trend is good. Obviously, we'd like to see that accelerate some. And, and obviously, this is in spite of really bad behavior in Washington. So the resiliency in the private sector is something that I'm really glad to see. I hope it continues. And if we could just do the things we all know we need to do, and that is the tax reform, entitlement reform, and deficit reduction, uh, if we could accomplish that this year, I think our economy could really take off. So that's where we need to keep our focus as policymakers. But no doubt, uh, from my perspective, I'm very glad to see these numbers today. How much credit do you give the White House for what we're seeing? I, you know, I don't think you'd be. Uh, expecting me to say anything different. I've been on the program many times, but I really don't give it any. I, I, I don't give Congress any. I don't give Washington any. I mean, these numbers are in spite of all of us uh, uh, and really bad behavior in Washington. Again, the inability to deal with the things that all of us know we need to deal with, and and those are the items I just mentioned. Obviously, as, uh, Europe has been a hangover, and there's not much we can do about that, and the headlines there continue to affect us uh, daily uh, in our own markets. But look, we haven't done the things in Washington that everyone knows uh, has to be done, and I'm hoping there's a window for that, Carl, in April as uh, as the Defense Department begins to, to sort of adjust, knowing that this sequester is going to begin taking place in January. And as people uh, on the left see that social programs are going to be uh, hugely affected. So I think there's an opportunity in April for us to do the things that all of us know need to happen. And if not then, in December, when much of the tax policy that exists today is going to be out the window uh, at the end of, on December 31st. Yeah. So I think there are two windows of opportunity, but I, I can't give Washington, uh, either Congress or the administration, any credit whatsoever. I mean, we just have not done the things that need to be done. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of so concern I think about this. Is this this is the private sector and its resiliency, uh, in spite of the fact that uh, we've had very bad behavior out of Washington. So you were so we're supposed to believe this is happening in a vacuum, and that and that if it were a Republican president in office, you would be saying the same thing. Uh, good news for the private Absolutely. sector. Good for them has nothing to do with policy in this country. Huh. Oh, I think I think these numbers would be far greater uh, had we done this last fall, the things that all, all know we need to do. I mean, the fact is we still, as people step back, uh, people are still concerned about whether we're going to address the, the great issues that this, this country has before it. So this is uh, certainly, uh, uh, this is absolutely outstanding. Uh, the people that I see and care about, uh, you know, they care about jobs. And, and thank God we've got a private sector in this country uh, that is moving on in spite of the way we've acted. But uh, we still have not done what we need to do. Washington should take no credit. As a matter of fact, I think these numbers, as I've mentioned, would be much bigger, much better, much stronger uh, had Washington put in place good policies. So you don't think that this builds the case for the extension of the payroll tax holiday and the extension of unemployment benefits? I, I mean, I don't know how you can look in the rearview mirror at something that happened in December uh, for policies that are going to begin to take place uh, in January. No, I don't think, uh, I don't think this builds a case. Uh, for anything other than uh, the great resiliency of our private sector to 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 move on in spite of uh, us in Washington uh, mm. acting as poorly as we do. So. But but in an environment where, rightly or wrongly, the president will take credit for the fact that the unemployment rate has gone down to yeah. eight and a half percent, what would you say yeah. to your fellow Republicans who may be lining up to uh, to oppose the extension of the yeah. payroll tax cut when it bounces back? in a month and a half yeah. because the politics, uh, Senator, are changing, are they not? Yeah, so, so look, I, I, I think the president, uh, he'll be out claiming credit for this, and he should, and, and I understand that. I, I don't think anybody in their right mind would attribute policies in Washington to, to what's happened. But look, Simon, the, the whole payroll tax issue that we got into, 
was a result of us not doing the big things that we need to do, and that is, again, uh, really reforming the tax code and doing away with low loopholes and lowering rates for everyone. If we had done the work that responsibly we all need to do, both Republicans and Democrats, then this whole debate and everything that happened in December would have been totally irrelevant. So these little skirmishes that you're seeing and this dysfunction that you're seeing really relate back to the fact that there are three big issues that we all know have to be dealt with. We haven't shown the will and the courage to do that. We have to do that. My sense is we still have a great opportunity for that to occur sometime in the year 2012. And again, I hope, uh, I really believe we still can do that. It may be in late December, but uh, that's what we need to do as a country. We need to show the world, we need to be uh, the leader in the world in showing that we have the ability to address our own domestic issues. And that's how we're gonna show American exceptionalism. And we have not done that to date, and it's disappointing. And I wake up every day working towards that end. Senator, good to talk to you as always. It's gonna be Thank interesting you. to see how the year shapes up. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Senator I'm Bob optimistic. Court. Thank you. Okay.